Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Uh, I've tried to keep this webinar quite unorthodox, so there are no formal introductions, despite my team insisted for that, but I'm of the opinion that what is being said is more important than who is saying it. Uh, in a small world where we are all digitally connected, introductions are more of formalities. So I would now commence the webinar formally with the word of thanks to you all for joining us this evening. And I hope that uh, it remains a time well spent for every one of us. Right, we always have these thoughts of continued professional development. And the moment we think of it, there are many choices that surface. And in today's session, I will try to uncover uh, some of the challenges, recommend some of the solutions. So one thing which is consistent with the human history is change. And we see it so many different shapes and forms. It starts from the environmental, how things around us have changed in terms of the built environment and also the climate, the people, the continents and the landscape around us. Economic changes need no introduction. There are countries which were 10 years back, not where they are today. It definitely impacts how we live, how we interact, how people meet and greet. So the social change is there. And needs no introduction is the technology. And I will talk more on the technology in a little bit but we all are aware and conscious how technology is impacting our life. Obviously, all of these put together also impact the organizations. So why I'm saying that the employees do have certain expectations from organizations and vice versa. However, we will see later in the webinar that how things have changed. So allow me to bring the technology bit in question here. So from evolution to revolution, that big piece of transistor based radio to a small handheld iPod, that is precisely the time when I could really know and capture the change, how technology is moving forward. But that point onwards, life has gone to a supersonic speed and so are the developments. Uh, Moore's law, it not only impacted the technology and the products which were transistor based, it has definitely gone ahead to impact our lives as well. Uh, in order to proceed further and just sort of uh, stay connected to each other by knowing each other slightly better, I would request you that uh, you kindly participate in a poll which is coming in a few minutes. So if those of you who are on your handheld devices, mobile phones, kindly please uh, use it with care so you make the option that you want to so there is the first poll where we just want to know you a little bit how much time you have spent in the industry that's the first question and there are options then trying to know a little bit more that what is the team size that you manage and first one being manage self and this is not something strange. Many of us go through uh, those organizational changes where quite a number of time we manage ourselves, but we do have interactions with stakeholders and business. So you could choose one of the options there. 
if you manage two to other five people, you manage other managers, or your team is big enough, more than 10 managers. And then there's a bit of knowing if you have been currently pursuing any qualification, any certification to upskill yourself. And then knowing your thoughts from the organizational context, what do you think? Which uh, is the right statement that you would choose for in terms of professional development? It is about an organization who provides a lot of opportunities or you being in a work environment that encourages application of what you have learned. Third option here is participating in challenges faced by the function or organization. So once we are battling day in, day out, the operations and other things, we learn a lot. And that's the hard learning, really. So having spent that time on the polls, I hope you all have uh, sort of submitted your uh, responses. 10 more seconds to this, and then we will see the results. Okay, so let's have a look at the results. That's interesting. So we've got people, 40% uh, who are managing other managers more than 10. We've got people who are managing others and oh, certainly there are people who are managing themselves. So thank you for that interest. I'll try to keep this relevant in our in the examples that I quote in the discussion as we built them. Right, so the change, going back to the same element, with the change, none of us can have a job for life. Automation, technology, innovation, all of these factors continue to disrupt the way we work the way organizations are growing and strategizing to manage the change and the challenges. However, it is must that one should not get overwhelmed with the technology. And I know to quite a few, this is an area which consistently comes as a challenge. Now, technology could be a piece of equipment, or it could be something which is now the big word, AI. Everybody seems to be slightly overwhelmed with AI, but hopefully we will cover that in another webinar. Uh, we shall be continuing with this series of uh, SME spotlights. So in order to remain future fit, the need is to sharpen the eggs and stay abreast of new ways of working, linking the skills and competencies. And I'll talk more on this because the two words are to some extent used interchangeably and to some, those could be a little confusing. So skills and competencies are what you need to develop to pursue your goals and objectives, not that of your organization. I will again go to explain about goals and objectives, and I talk about skills and competencies. But when I say not that of your organization, I don't mean to say that you don't follow what the organization is doing because the webinar is purely about your own professional development. So my uh, referring, what I was referring here is the goals and objectives that you have set for yourself, okay? So moving on from here, uh, we also know that the range and reach of training programs is becoming wider. You Google 
on any subject for that matter. If you just Googled project management, you will probably get 6 million different results about project management and a thousands of opportunities how you could develop yourself in that bit. But that's not uh, what we should be worried about. What we need to go and take a deep dive is understanding how this impacts our life. So thanks for the poll. Now, this is uh, some, there are some interesting figures that I've got from a paper I studied a few years back that says 75% of 1,500 managers across 50 different organizations were dissatisfied with their company's learning and development function. Strange, but a fact, and I'll quote you the reference for this. 70% of the employees report that they don't have the mastery of the skills needed to do their job. 12% of, of employees apply the new skills learned in the L&D programs. And 25% of the total respondents to a McKinsey survey believe that training measurably improved performance. Now, this may sound a little complex, but the reason to bring up this in the discussions is that once we make a choice, what to learn, equally important is when to learn, how to learning, how to learn is pretty much your individual style. I touched upon the skills and competencies in my previous uh, uh, slide discussion. So that's the name of the, the, the report that I was referring to. It was in the Harvard Business report, uh, Review, where companies go wrong with learning and development. It goes back to October 2019. Now, skills are the specific learned abilities that we need to perform a given job well, such as for the software people coding, for people who are involved in managing processes or people inspections, people who do desk-based jobs, let's say writing tenders, writing reports. So these are the skills. On the other hand, are competencies which are much more wider and they, those include multiple skills. So project management, we would know about schedule management, we would know about cost management, we would know about human resource management, so on and so forth. Strategic planning, again a competency, and negotiations to make it simple how do we get things done from our colleagues, from our service providers, from partners in business? So those are our skills of negotiation. And always the two are interconnected. We may be very good at a particular competency, but there might be certain skills that we need to improve. So this is just to give you a little bit of clarity on the perspective. Then I touched upon the goals and objectives. So goals, basically, they create a vision with a wider range. They are outcomes-based. They are qualitative in general description. And very often, there are, they are unmeasurable. On the flip side are the objectives. And objectives are actions, action-driven. They are quantitative and they are measurable. Again, the goals and objectives, the two remain interlinked because you will set a goal for yourself and from that, one would create a set of objectives. So that expression being clarified, I go back, whether you do what your organization want to do, certainly that's the job part of it, but based on the statistics that I quoted to you, it becomes very evident that continued professional development is better termed as a self-development and it is organization's responsibility as much as your own. And why so? Because 
your career is quite like that game wherein you have factors which will encourage you these factors could be specialization in a specific field it could be salary quite often it can be and it could be the seniority within a function within an organization or within a professional discipline there are people who feel more satisfied once they are influencing the industry or a region so to say now that being said i move on to say what is in it for you in today's session so we quickly talk about the webinar objectives at first we will today scan how do we select a qualification certification that supplements your knowledge obviously at all stages we have an existing uh, piece of knowledge we have certain skill set but we continuously want to improve so how to select a, a qualification or certification that's one number two we will draw some reflections from the desired competencies at various stages of the career so that we invest our time and efforts in the right direction by purpose i am not bringing in the dollars bit or the monetary investments i'm saying the time and efforts because for every busy object uh, a professional it is very difficult to find the time out okay money for in some cases the organization will pay and in some cases will have our own resources and then how do we challenge and succeed through the barriers by making informed decisions towards the self development so these are the three objectives and in doing that we have split the webinar into three parts in the first part we are understanding the organizational design uh i'm sure most of you would have seen in your organizations these different tiers of management and those could be called differently depending which organization you work for but so starting bottom up is the frontline staff frontline supervision then the middle management management and at the top is leadership depicted by gray and that really is by purpose because that's where the most of the gray areas come and i'll explain that how so if i was to look at these different uh, tiers uh, within an organization there is a level of job complexity that comes so the blue ribbons here depict the front line and the supervision jobs which are relatively straight forward easy to define very few unknowns in those normally there is not much of change those are repetitive tasks time in time a day in day out and normally those have a low impact so if a mistake is made i would not say there is no impact but that would be very low impact at that small post at that small facility level but as we move forward to the middle management and the management levels the job complicate becomes more complicated it is mostly predictable but very regularly it changes because of every given situation every given challenge and then these are usually tactical and they would have medium level impact if a mistake is done there would be some financial loss some reputational loss some process errors etc but to the overall direction of the business or the results they do not contribute that much and as we move to the strategic area where i said by purpose the color, color was chosen as gray that's difficult to know it's almost a rainforest there are much many unpredictable changes which will come frequently quite often we do 
non-routine tasks, some emergency happens across the country, some crisis starts. So every decision that is taken by the people at the strategic level, it would have a high impact. A small mistake can cause million dollars of impact. Likewise, the contributions in setting the directions of the business or the function, the contributions are also high. Now, let's let, allow me to expand it further slightly on the complexity side. There are many dimensions. One, the execution. How do we ensure the plan that has been developed, it is being implemented at the right time in the right direction and we are getting the right results. There is cognitive complexity about the, those jobs because they involve a lot of thinking, creating analysis. Then the influencing part. Why would a person in supply chain listen to the security director's urgent need? But if you have that persona to get results, get people's support to your objective, only then you can get it done. And then the creativity. You being a director in an organization would be good enough for first six months once you bring in some change. And then you got to be creative in either enhancing the value for business or cutting the costs. And then comes the emotional complexity because the higher you go, the more lone you become. You cannot be sharing your problems and your challenges with your teams downwards. You rather pretty much uh, absorb them, swallow them. And then it's multi-domain. As a director, you got to know about security technology. You got to know about the changes in human a retention, you got to know the business processes, the business interests, so on and so forth. Very quickly looking at what people do at different level. So there is uh, the CSO, the chief security officer, the vice president or the director. They are normally involved in decision making, managing the C-suite, being the advisor to other functions, managing key external and internal stakeholders, the police, the Ministry of Interior, etc. And I'm by purpose bringing it down to the security industry. Obviously, they become a guide for others and they provide resources. Managers rather agree on objectives. They make the decision at the departmental level. They remain involved in high-level planning and they oversee the execution. Tech team managers go into the detailed planning and implementation. They manage the people and the processes alike. They identify the variations and they report those variations from the agreed objectives and the results. And they also report the performance. Whereas at the specialist level or supervisor level, these are more procedural aspects wherein they do the job and ensure that people below are doing what they have been asked. And at the level five, which is the frontline and supervision, uh, frontline, uh, the tasks and activities ensure the people are searched and ensure vehicle access control is right and material access control is right and documents are maintained. So that is the <clears throat> very quick reflection on those. That being said, Time to go for a very quick poll once more. So let's have another poll for quick 40 seconds. Please do drop your message in the chat box once you're done. The first question basically asks that, do you agree, disagree, partially agree that in training uh, in the security industry, it is usually compliance-based, not competency-based? 
if your organization is facing that, please share your thoughts. It is usually time and administration cumbersome. You got to free up people from their shifts, from their posts, bring them for uh, learning at the learning venue at the right time. So there is a lot of effort that goes in finding the reliefs and the rotations and who will do the job in their absence. And then another factor is that it lacks the feedback. So feedbacks usually are provided at the end of the training but not always those feedback provide the accurate information. So we give it 30 more seconds for you guys to give your opinion. How do you feel about it? Hopefully it's not very complicated. And if it is, and we make a few mistakes, that's fine. Take it as a learning curve. So let's have the results now. Interesting. So 67% people agree that is compliance based, few agree, strongly agree, some strongly disagree. And that's interesting. In time and attendance, I think everybody is on the same page, those who have contributed, that yes, it is cumbersome and lacks feedback. There are people who strongly disagree. That's very interesting. Okay, so I don't know. But if you come from an organization where the training uh, is delivered in a way that after that there's a feedback taken from functional managers in terms of performance improvement, then you're a lucky one. So allow me to, with this poll, and uh, thank you for that, allow me to move on to the next section where we talk a few myths and methods about uh, professional development. And there's a very interesting story that I've narrated a couple of times before about Noah and his father, whose name is Arthur. Both uh, love reading. Noah is from the Gen Z. He is looking at his phone, whereas Arthur wants to study through the book, which is good enough. And there's a difference. No, what Noah says on the sees on the same page is something different than what Arthur sees. Now, I know this is more of a storytelling, but what I'm trying to bring in here is the difference in people's perspective. So same figure, image, could be interpreted differently by different people. That makes me comfortable to say that now that we have 2.6 billion people from Gen Z as our workforce, our learning focus, our learning behaviors should also be steered in a way that we are able to cater those new uh, generation, those new people who are very different to what we were at our times. Those are self-directed learners. They know, uh, they are motivated. They know how, what they can learn faster and better. They have initiatives. They know how to find things rather than face-to-face -face learning. And they also know what learning do they need to do the job. And they understand their own needs in that they know how to access information. Thanks to Mr. Google or Ms. Google, they have made things very easy and it's getting even better. 
with the chat GPT, so on and so forth. So again, this was purely a contextual information that once we create a learning path, we got to think of the Gen Z and their traits. Then we also know that more learning happens through the workflow, which is about 70%. 20% of the learning happens through the social feedback, networking, mentoring, coaching, and only 10% through instructor-led programs. Now, I would go back to uh, Meslow's theory uh, of need. Nobody needs a detailed introduction on this, but this gives a very interesting uh, perspective to the learning needs. What at what stage. So uh, Maslow had the five different tiers of meeting the needs, although he later came back and added two more, but I have kept it simple for now. So starting from very basic physiological needs to the safety, to the love and belonging, esteem, and then self-actualization. Allow me to bring in Bloom's taxonomy about learning which says we first start learning by remembering, then we understand, then we apply the knowledge that we have learned, then we start analyzing the results, what is working, what isn't. We evaluate how results can be made better, and then we are able to create. Now, this was used in education environment Obviously, it impacts the training, but if we were to combine the two, knowing that in the learning, there are three different areas from the cognitive skills, which is more of your mental understanding, comprehension, application, to the psychomotoric skills, where your body and your mind work together, to the affective skills, which is by far the most important. The higher you go in an organization, more you know, need to have emotional controls, better perceptions, how to respond, when not to respond, etc. So joining the two uh, theories together, we get to a stage where Maslow's need on one side and the Bloom's learning on the other side, we understand the first level is basic needs of the profession. So then is the safety and security, which means you start understanding the broader concepts about the profession or the discipline. Moving on to belongingness in terms of an organization, it means how we apply the knowledge that we have how we analyze our performance. And then it comes this stage of self-esteem on one hand, on evaluate on the other hand, which basically supplements your confidence and your sense of achievement. Now, those of us who are at the stage of managing managers, that's the area they should be looking at. And then comes the highest level of self-actualization from Maslow's theory and from the Bloom's learning, the, the ability to create. That's where the directors, the vice president, and the people at the strategic levels come into the play. Right, so that was a rather a quick fire. I'm conscious of the time. So we go on to a very quick poll. Again, not more than one minute. So. There we are. How do you rate security and asset protection training programs? Is it more theory than the action learning? And you could agree, disagree, partially agree, strongly agree. Are those traditional, formal, and one way where the instructor is available in the class, he speaks, people listen, participate, and go away? Does it lack engagement and reward? I don't know how many people, after completing 
a certification come back to the business and business is waiting for them to be promoted. That doesn't happen and it cannot happen. That is never to be considered the basis of learning. So just a few more seconds for completing the questionnaire. I'll appreciate if in the chat box you just write done. All right, five more seconds and then we quickly go to the results so that we have got some time for taking questions. Right, let's go to the results, please. All right, so a lot of people disagree that it is theory more than action learning, so that's a positive. Uh, 50% of the people agree that it's very formal one way. And people also agree, 63% people agree uh, that it lacks engagement and reward. And as I said earlier, at no point in time, we should go on a learning path just because the day I come back, the organization is going to promote me. That probably is not going to happen. So allow me to move on, uh, thanking you for the polls and sharing your opinions. Now, how do we make the right choice? Very quickly, I'm gonna show you here the ATD uh, Talent Development Capability Model. You can Google it for further details. I'll be sharing the slide deck in the shape of a PDF. So whenever you're reading through it and you wanna Google a specific area, please do and build up questions that point onwards. So your personal capability, developing professional capability and how you impact the organization. Now, that's how we have kept it. Uh, the ATD model is, and I have kept the same color scheme. Allow me to say personal effectiveness is more about the soft skills that we learn at the early stages of life and as we go on different professional tiers, we keep improving those. Whereas workplace competencies represent our motives and traits that we have, which is more intrapersonal. It could be how we communicate, how we work with the teams, how we serve our customers, how uh, open we are to adapt the digital technology, et cetera. Moving on to the academic competencies, it's primarily learned in the educational settings, i.e. during a university, college, or in the training programs, but those impacts stay with us. We learn how to be a critical thinker. We start analyzing problems. We solve problems. We live with reasoning. And then it is followed by technical competencies, these also move from one stage to the other, but quite often the technical competencies would help you across different functions within the discipline. And then comes the segment specific competencies for easy understanding. I can count uh, that aviation security is by far the most technology integrated where human interface, applying the processes, using the technology, we see best of it at any airport when the passengers are scanning. So is with the cargo, et cetera. Banking, fairly technical in advanced countries, getting better in other industrial, quite often get the backing of the government and they, they get the support for the protection of critical infrastructure. So I go back to the first uh, the the talent model that we had shown from ATD. So time management, cultural awareness, and inclusion. How we collaborate, leadership, taking on the challenges, communicating better, 
being a compliant and ethical uh, person, managing your emotions right, and you go on a lifelong journey of learning. That's the personal aspect. Allow me to move to the professional, wherein we learn the security fundamentals, the technology, the people, the process that keeps going on. And till we start learning more about how security function interacts with HR, with supply chain, with finance, with business operations, with legal compliance and risk, et cetera, we follow and learn about few standards, policies and processes, maturing how to uh, put those on a maturity model. We learn about emergency response because no emergency is a standalone incident for one business function. They are usually across the organization. And then we learn more about industry profile. What are the challenges to our industry? So if I work for an FMCG company or a retail company, shrinkage is a bit of challenge and banking fraud is a challenge. And then we also learn about what are the new technologies which are impacting our business segment. So that's the professional capability bit. We move on to the strategic level where people's behaviors and people's competencies create results starting from operational excellence to the resource optimization, uh, awareness with the culture and the strategic frameworks of the business, performance improvement, managing change in people and organization to become future ready. Now that bit is how people at the strategic levels impact. However, we all do start somewhere and we keep building our competencies to the next level. And that is from basics to intermediate to advanced and to expert. As we go along, the expert level is where your competencies impact the entire organization. Num level three, which is advanced, is more for your function. Now, that being said, I would move on from here to ask you again a very quick round of your inputs in the chat boxes, please. Allow me to ask a question. Uh, I will type it as well in the chat box. What do you think are the tools or means available for professional development? So please do not hesitate. There's no right or wrong answer. Just say what you want to say. What are the tools and means available for professional development? You could uh, type your answers short and sweet fairly quickly. So trainings, spokes, great. Education, seminars, excellent. New knowledge and experience. YouTube, very interesting, but it can be very intimidating, quite time consuming. Webinars, professional courses, trainings, engagement, that's by far the most effective. Uh, if you don't engage people, friendship to social circles, absolutely why not? We need to have those friends across online courses, career coaches, excellent, thank you. Training, networking, absolutely right. Thank you. Uh, any more inputs, you're welcome. Different knowledge, now that's interesting how different knowledge is a tool to learn. Probably that's an approach. Now, that being said, Allow me to take you to the next part and we are pretty much towards the end of the webinar. So we have few some time for question answers. So let's say there's a learning domain that 
Nadim thought he must improve his technological knowledge. And then we know that it's a goal to learn more about technology, but then he fixes uh, it into three different objectives. So objective one, he says, learn about security technology, which is the equipment, uh, the barriers, the gates, the access controls, etc. Now I'm just using that for, to, for the sake of simplicity. Um, Objective two could be learning how technology is shaping and changing, how it integrates with IT. And objective three could be what are the shortcomings for which we should have right processes and we should prepare our people that we cannot be 100% technology reliant. We got to have that human element. Now, to, do, to learn in these different objectives, we would look at different skill sets. And each skill can be learned through either an assignment, an individual project, a concept lecture, a seminar, a project given to a group, work-based project where CCTV upgrades are happening or access control is being changed, webinar, you guys mentioned it, workshops, uh, podcast. I don't think anybody mentioned podcast, but that's an effective tool. Once you are working out or you're on the treadmill, that's a good good uh, spend of time. Mentoring, making presentations, writing a piece of article, uh, peer reviews, and benchmarking. Benchmarking is precisely looking at other organizations, how they do, they do the things that you want to do. Now, my promise uh, in this webinar was that it will be a totally uh, marketing free. We do not uh, wish to say which course you should take, which project uh, is a better certification, yes and no. All we say is that we have given you the competencies, we have, we have told you the changes. That brings me to the end of today's session from my side. Uh, those of you who wish to leave, by all means, and those who have some questions, please do not hesitate. I'm here to answer as many as uh, I can, and there's no limit for, of time for that. So thank you very much for being with us this evening. Uh, please share your questions, whatever those are. Use the chat box, please. Thank you, Ali. Thanks for being with us. You certainly are a role model for the youngsters and we'll have more sessions on one-on-one -on -one basis to bring it to the public and share your success story. Dulali, thank you for being with us today. And I feel quite relieved that there are not too many com questions, neither complicated nor simple. So great. Amir, kindly go ahead, ask the question that you wish to ask, please. Vital. Thank you for being with us again. So Amir, kindly shoot your question. So there's a question, which platforms are available for learning new technologies in security? 
a difficult one for me to answer because I'm not very friendly with technology, but I can recommend you a couple of magazines and I can recommend you a website. So if you follow ASIS, uh, they've got a range of technology solution providers. They also have got ASIS online a magazine, which brings on different technologies. Security Middle East is another good magazine. Uh, ISJ, International Security Journal, is another magazine. Uh, Google searches could be quite time-consuming. So I would say watch with care. Professional networking events is one good opportunity. I hope I have answered to some extent your question, Mr. Akbar. If I didn't, please... Uh, ask further. Amir, should a person focus on one career path or expertise or it's okay to improve a two paths at the same time? Well, I still feel there are a lot many things that I need to learn more. So it never comes to an end because I have my colleagues with me who are far better in many dimensions than what I am. So at no stage we can say that we have become an expert people will keep learning along the time and getting more matured. But yes, if you set your own path, then do put milestones that by 2024, I should have completed these three basic programs. <clears throat> because if we don't have milestones, it would become like, uh, okay, next week and next month and some busy routine, some emergency, somebody falling sick, child's admission to the school or child starts going for the swimming classes, et cetera, et cetera. So that keeps happening. Security training and project management, for example, security training is more of a passion and project management is a competency. I'm happy to answer you more on one-to-one -one basis. Excuse me. Abdullah is asking about, I want to ask self-study. Now, that's very interesting. Uh, I did it with PMP and I got above the target. Now I self-study PCI, but I feel mess with it. My answer to this is slightly strange. Uh, universities are and colleges and institutes are there to take the knowledge and transfer those into the learners as skills. And skills are there to improve our behaviors, our abilities. Unless we start practicing what we have learned in a program, in my opinion, with the respect to all, there is no fun of having a bouquet of 11 different certifications, but we don't get an opportunity to apply. So Abdullah, yes, you've done PNP. You're going with PCI, which is not very easy because that's not in our common life on day-to-day -day basis. So you may struggle, but happy to help by referring you to somebody who can coach you, who can mentor you. Which professional networking options we have? Today we had one. And it's going to be a continued series every month, at least one webinar. For initial few months, we are doing on two, but we'll bring it down to at least one a webinar a month. There are opportunities which are virtual and also face-to-face. Uh, -face. Hajra says, how beginners can identify their professional development need? What do you love to do more? Do you like to do research or you like to create something? If you are into research, then pick up on the knowledge domains that you want to research. Don't make the mistakes of making a huge list because with the dynamism, with the changes in the society and the environment, those are quite likely to change. So pick up a list of three areas that you want to do research give it quarter of a year and then you from that you might identify that now i wanted to learn about change management but within that 
I have realized that I also need to understand how change is impacting our life outside work and at work. So I need to learn more about human behaviors. So that's uh, my, my tip on it. Hajra, I hope I have answered your question. And since there are no more questions coming up and we are just about a minute short of the time that we had, uh, I believe there's a question answer from Ali. Uh, I have one question, please, regarding education feedback. I don't know if Ali is there. I think I can't tell by looking at the participants if he's around or he's left. Probably is left, so I'll speak to him on the phone. Right, so that brings us to the end of today's session. I made my best effort with my poor communication skills, but I'm learning, I'm improving, that I could make it interesting. Thanks to my team who helped me to put together this presentation with different shapes and shades and colors to keep it interesting for the learners who are not present with us. Uh, we will be sharing the slide decks and the recording link in, uh, link in next 48 hours. Till then, all the best. Thank you.